How do fractional CMOs hit the ground running? Hi, I'm Dean Way. Welcome to Fractional CMOs and the 90 Day Win. There's a lot of variety in how they kick off a new plan engagement. In fact, there's so much variety, it's valuable to just listen to what opportunities they look for, what they tackle first, and what they wish wasn't true when they start a new project. So let's find out. Hey, Tracy. Hey, Dean. Uh, thanks for having me on your podcast. You're I really very appreciate welcome. this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, hypothetical one-year engagement that you just started, okay? Mm -hmm. um, you're gonna be the fractional CMO. Uh, we'll talk about early wins uh, in just a minute, but like, what's like the main or, or top two problems you either normally see on day one or what problems do you go hunting for on day one? Cause you know, they're gonna be there. So Dean, yes, through several oh, of my, I'm, oh, go I'm ahead, sorry. sorry. Also mm -hmm. remember, uh, I'm sorry to introduce yourself. I should have said that, it's been a day. Uh <laughs> no, I hear you. So again, thank you, Dean, for having me. Um, so Tracy Waringer, I'm the founder of Moonshot Strategy. I've been in marketing for Great, just a, just about three decades. <laughs> uh, but so to kind of go into a little bit my track record, I've led extensive yeah. projects into ramping up revenue and my style is really about strategy and numbers. So I dive deep into the numbers to really understand prior history and what the future growth looks like for meeting revenue. Um, but to, to go into really answer your question about what I see and what I hunt for on day one is two things, is data, understanding their data from a marketing and sales lens. Right. Uh, looking through that and then secondly is looking at the marketing resources that are on board so far what i found is doing those just those top three is that i uncover redundancy in roles globally when i look at when i look at clients um, or that they're not resourced accordingly to the goals that the CEO has for the organization. Right. What are those specific KPIs that they're looking to realize? What's the promise to Wall Street? Um, and then, so secondly, getting back to the data, what I do is really look at whatever their CRM and map system is, if they have a BI solution, what does that data look like? Is there trust in data right now? Do, does the CEO trust the reporting that they're looking at and right. the data that they have? Um, and then from an understanding of marketing attribution to revenue, I will look at that data as well to understand where is their latency in the in the overall sales stages. Um, a lot of times when I look at the velocity of awareness, unaware, all the way through to closed one, there are specific areas of latency, maybe not the right message to the right audience and those kinds of things. Um, but at the end of the day, those are the two items that I really focus on day one. Um, in order to set the stage for success. Good. And uh, hi, Tanisha. Hi. <laughs> uh, oh. Same question. Like, what, if anything, do you find that you normally see on day one or that you might as well go hunting for mm -hmm. uh, on day one problem-wise? And uh, tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Absolutely. So uh, I am Tanisha Griggs. I have about 15 plus years of marketing and sales experience. Um, I own my own. I'm the CEO and founder of 37X Digital Marketing Agency. It's a digital agency that specializes in B2B and e-commerce brands. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's really important to think about like the types of CM, fractional CMOs, uh, because it, whereas if you're Tracy and you're working with uh, larger, like more mid-sized enterprise companies, they'll have different needs from their fractional CMO versus uh, you know, the startups that I generally work with where I serve as the fractional CMO. So my agency, I do contract work for brands uh, like Terminus and Microsoft. But in terms of fractional CMO work, I generally work more in the startup capacity. 
So what I typically look for is, um, you know, having a clear strategic vision, uh, because if there's no strategic vision, then it's really hard for everyone to be like on the same page. So exactly. I'm really you don't have a foundation to build on. Yeah, mm-hmm. like I want to make sure that we all have a compass that you know we're working towards, and I think that also kind of segues way into like the alignment uh, needed and required for us to build a healthy organization. Uh, we want to make sure as an executive leadership team that we're all in alignment to this vision as well. So mm-hmm. um, it's it really easy for like startup brands to bring in a, a fractional CMO, and then they're expecting you to like hit certain metrics. Yeah. And, you know, establish these like, you know, they already have these kind of KPIs maybe already set with no sure. vision. And so I want to make sure like we take a step back and go more towards those like critical foundational elements uh, so that we're not constantly course correcting and having to pivot later down the line that we just solidify this early on. So then are there any kind of like early wins or and I hate this phrase, but low hanging fruit that, you know, you try to go after in the first like 30, 60, 90 yeah, um, I think that it's a really establishing like a clear like go to market plan and yeah. a, a sound like, you know, marketing roadmap. Um, also to like understanding what type of metrics we want to make sure that we're tracking. Um, like, don't expect me to come in day one and give me a pipeline revenue target. Like I will yeah. quickly push back on you because I don't necessarily even understand like, you know, may not understand the nuances of your mark of your market or the brand. And I need to have discovery conversations with a customer. So I'm really in a learning mode that first 90 days. And that's where you really want your CMO to be, um, especially to working like in a startup capacity, because there's so many unknowns. It's it's not a lot of data to Tracy's point. Like data is a great starting point. But what it, what about if you're working with a startup who doesn't really have a lot of data? Right. And you really have to go back to those foundational elements. Right. Very solid point. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, from my lens, what I see in uh, organizations that have been in a growth mode, but then maybe have plateaued Mm -hmm. coming in and uh, realizing um, some of the the key aspects when I go through and do uh, stakeholder interviews with the other uh, executive leadership team, understanding what they've seen work and not work in past history, uh, having the interviews and stakeholder conversations with the CEO, getting clarity on their strategic vision, any uh, barriers that they've seen, any disruption in the industry, disruption in the marketplace, getting that clarity. And then um, the other aspect from a fractional CMO is where is that true alignment with sales? What What is the um, KPIs or the, the sales goals that are taking place? And where is that alignment with marketing? Has there been alignment? Or generally what I've seen is no alignment, right. you know, where um, when I see and put into place revenue marketing center of excellence, it's really that marriage between marketing and sales that, Uh, those specific goals that the sales team has is also married into the marketing goals. So they're lock and step. Um, But yeah, so Tanisha, to your point from a startup, I completely, you know, agree with what you're saying. So Tracy, then Mm -hmm. what do clients normally not know or don't see about their business? Analytics aside, because you know, I think we've covered that. Mm-hmm. What do they normally not even see or, or know about their business until like they bring in uh, a CMO or bring in you? So several silver clients that I had, mm-hmm. uh, they were targeting <clears throat> not the correct ICP, so ideal customer profile, that they haven't done the right due diligence to understand who is the actual buyer? There are so many times that there's been guesswork without true testing or interviews being done, um, or the knowledge that there may be a, a high level buying committee behind that. So not having the right ICP 
or wasting time on the completely wrong ICPs. Um, I've uncovered that in so many of my clients. How about you, Tanisha? Um, same thing. And I love that you brought that point up, Tracy, because um, in terms of understanding your ICP, like that's such a foundational yes. element to your strategy. And, and I've been in ABM, like selling ABM solutions for the last six years. So mm -hmm. it's definitely core. And I would say this to a lot of brands feel like defining your ICP is a one time, like a one and done exercise. And it's not like over time, your product evolves, market change it, market dynamics change. And think about what the pandemic did. It disrupted a lot of industries. And so they had to pivot in a lot of cases, their ICP and not go after, maybe you were taking maybe travel and hospitality was a key right. vertical that you were selling into. Well, it was really hard when no one was traveling. And so being able to like pivot uh, you know, throughout different market changes, you know, or whatever it may be that could cause, uh, you know, a decline in sales across different verticals. It definitely always goes back to the data to like see like where you're converting at a higher rate across mm -hmm. the industries, where you're seeing declining sales to like really have this flywheel approach to like, you know, make pivots necessary to like keep your conversion rates high. Hey, Tanisha. Mm -hmm. So let's, um, let's invert a role for a second. Uh, okay. So here's my question. Uh, imagine that you're the CEO of, you know, like a startup or a mid-sized company, you make a widget, you know, whatever. And you're, you've brought on your first ever fractional CMO. Okay. How are you going to squeeze every last cent of value out of that fractional CMO in the next 12 months? Um, so no, it's a great question. And I would say um, in terms of how do you get the most value mm -hmm. out of your CMO, I think it uh, really goes down to really understanding the, um, the, the, the core responsibilities of that CMO and to your organization, how you want to integrate them. Because if you really think about the marketing function, a lot of CEOs want to silo CMOs just to marketing. And marketing has such like um, uh, additional, like so much more value to add as a stakeholder to other parts of the business right. that you don't want to silo your CMO just to marketing. Um, if you think about the role that marketing plays within product, like they have the closest, like the pulse of the, like to the customer to like really understand the market, the changing market needs, the different dynamics within the market, the, the buyers and being able to like uh, articulate that and communicate that with product is essential to help influence the product vision to understand what they need to produce with the ever changing market dynamics. Mm -hmm. Another thing going back to what Tracy said is, that unification of marketing and sales and marketing should be a flywheel of data to provide back to sales to understand how our ICP is shifting. Like, who do we need to, you know, be targeting? Who, who, what are the right prospects to be having conversations with? Getting data from them to know what's working well, what's not working well. And I think lastly is with customer experience, um, being a stakeholder there, like, I think during the pandemic, we realized that like, you know, we had to like people were or brands were declining in terms of like, you know, their their rate of buying new tech tools and new software. So customer retention became the new acquisition. Like the focus was now on GRR and not new logos mm -hmm. and marketing had to adapt to that to be able to now like really start to extract as much value from the customer base in order to re retain them and upsell them to sustain. So I definitely think that just in summary, getting the most value from your CMO is not putting them in a box of just marketing, expecting them to do marketing things. It's being a stakeholder across other areas of the business. Tracy, how about maximum value? Squeeze every last absolutely, penny. How absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so in the beginning, I'm a huge fan of a 90-day plan. You know, yeah. if I'm the CEO, I'm going to sit with that fractional CMO and I'm going to make sure that 
you know, they're doing the due diligence right across different departments, whether it's customer success, product, uh, sales, and, um, you know, making sure that they're building out that um, strategy document, that 90-day plan for short-term, long-term goals and wins, um, and being very realistic on, you know, maximizing not only budget, but resources to uh, make sure that roadmap is is really solid. And then it has milestones, like what are you, what specific milestones are you going to be held accountable right. for? Um, and, and to Tanisha's point, you know, it's so important again to be across different departments because to me, a fractional CMO has oversight into revenue operations. Mm -hmm. Operations, you know, is the technology that they have on board, is it the right tech stack? Um, are they utilizing? I've come into different organizations where, you know, they have they might have Salesforce and Marketo and, you know, Five Nines or different intent, Six Cents, but it's not maximized and it's not fully um, integrated into, um, you know, creating the automation and everything that is needed. Uh, so, you know, from that lens, creating value and getting every dollar of value out of a fraction, fractional CMO, they need to have that underlining experience of the different departments and how they really bring into marketing. Because like Tanisha said, marketing is not a, an island upon itself. It's really, you know, just integrated into so much of the business from brand, from acquisition. And then another element that not many marketers really talk about is after you have the whole acquisition side, but the expansion. Tanisha was just talking about, you know, a little bit about lifetime value, but it's so important to realize and understanding what is that onboarding process and how do you take that customer from onboarding to all the way through to the people that amplify your brand. Those are the people that are going to sit on your panels and, and be the ones that validate your, your brand promise to the market and just make it sure from that fractional CMO that they're looking holistically across from the acquisition to expansion and with all the tech, the resources, the strategy, the data. So it's, it's you know, a fractional CMO should have that breath to bring in and have the awareness of understanding where are those missed opportunities and how are we going to mitigate those missed opportunities? Uh, that's a great answer. Um, by the way, um, Tanisha, uh, I, I would try to avoid um like abbreviations because most of the audience is not in marketing and to be honest i don't know what the g in grr stands for i know like our, our is recurring revenue what's the g in grr um the g and oh my gosh why am i having a See, uh, everyone gets used to the abbreviation uh, after a while and they forget what it's for i mean this happens on all oh, it's, i love it why did I just lose my whole train of thought? ARR is annual recurring revenue. Annual, yeah. MRR is monthly recurring um, revenue. Tracy, help me. Maybe it's... Um, we have to um, edit this out. Um, I'm always yeah. usually ARR, you know, but maybe it's, I know, con like contract, annual contract oh, revenue. Sorry. I think that's what you're thinking. Gross about. retention rate. No, it's gross retention rate. Oh, gross, right. retention, gross retention, retention rate. rate. And I don't know why. All I right, I led you down the wrong path on that one. <laughs> let's uh, let, 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 no, let's thank you, Google. Because <laughs> it is so critical. And because you yeah. asked me, I, like, my brain went, like, dead for two seconds. <laughs> gross um, retention rate is so critical to, like, valuation of SaaS companies. Mm -hmm. So it's a key metric when you look at valuation. Mm -hmm. And you want to look at the rate in which customers uh, renew and right. the rate in which you retain their revenue. Because if you have like a B2B SaaS product and you're selling at an exponentially high rate in terms of new uh, revenue and you're losing those customers at a 40% rate, mm 
Like then that's a key indicator that it's not a sustainable business moving forward. Sure. So GRR is a critical metric in um, the valuation of B2B SaaS companies. Mm -hmm. And for like two seconds, my brain went. I didn't have my private private equity hat on. I was thinking about (laughs) ARR and MR. Yes. Uh, so, uh, thanks for clarifying that though, because it, it is really, I didn't know. I, you know, it's a really important metric in terms yes. of um, SaaS companies and valuations. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Okay. And so, uh, Tanisha, and then we'll go back to Tracy. Uh, I think like the last thing that I wanted to learn from you guys uh, uh, in this episode is, um, you know, we, I am not a fractional CMO, right? That's not my business. I'm usually like hired by fractional CMOs on behalf of their clients. And so I know and have talked to like a lot of fractional CMOs and similar in your businesses, you talk to a lot more prospective clients than will ever become clients. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, What's kind of like a red flag that a prospective client should not be hiring a fractional CMO or isn't ready for one right now. So Tracy's figuring out what to say so that she doesn't I'll uh, start then. Uh, pick uh, off her, her clients. And then Tanisha's like, why did I have to go first on this? It's okay. I'll get Tracy some time. So um I I think everything, like I said, I've I've planted this flag on this field in terms of alignment. And I think it has to go back to having a strategic vision and having clear ownership. So when you think about like the role of the CEO. Like they, it's, it's three elements. They are setting the vision, funding the business and hiring the right people. Mm -hmm. And so in terms of when to hire the right people in terms of like your fractional CMO is critical, but you don't want to hire them prematurely if you don't have a strategic vision because they are not the what or the why that is the CEO's responsibility. They are the how, and you want to make sure that like you may have marketing needs where you can easily contract that out to like freelancers with fiber upwork for content and mm-hmm. you know things like that where you don't necessarily need that level of expertise with a fractional CMO. Um, and you, if you think about like the go to market motion, there are so many elements to that in terms of you know the mission and the vision being aligned to it, the value props, sales strategy, marketing strategy, partnerships that your CMO does not own that. And I think that's a really big misconception that the CMO is the sole owner of the go-to-market strategy of the company. Right. So unless you have that in place, unless you have that vision set, I think it's premature to hire a fractional CMO um, if you really want to be efficient like with your resources. Tracy, what do you think? What's a, a so, red flag? Yeah, so red flag for me is... If they haven't fully baked their services yet or their product offering, uh, I've come in and, and talked to a couple of potential clients where, you know, the the CEO is um, so excited about bringing their, their product or their solution to market, or maybe they've had their product in development for quite a number of you know, a specific number of, of um, months that they feel that, you know, they could immediately go to market without testing and um, going through right. beta testing and that sort of thing, um, where there needed to be a little bit more time before even thinking about a fractional CMO. Um, you know, something like that could, I would look at a little bit more like advisory, you know, and help them to get to a point where where there is a solid business structure or alignment to bring on a fractional CMO, mm-hmm. uh, but sometimes <clears throat> they're um, too ahead of the curve and too excited, uh, you know, to to get going without really having <laughs> anything fully baked to to really go to market. Mm-hmm. And I think I want to add one more thing to that because um, as you as we think about like the needs of the business and uh, the resources, like a fractional CMO, I think it also goes back to expertise and like what, what type of CMO you need for that time in your business as well. 
because like, like, you know, Tracy is clearly more of a strategic, um, right. you know, CMO, whereas maybe your early stage, your startup, and you need someone really hands on that's more, you know, like hands on key and you're bootstrapping and you're, you're much more in the weeds. Mm -hmm. So having that higher level of like expertise with Tracy as your CMO and you're like a startup, you may also too be like, you know, kind of um, not over hiring or like, um, you know, overpaying for a CMO, but maybe you don't need that level of expertise. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important for you to like identify as a founder or as a CEO what type of CMO you need for the stage in which your business is in. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Thank you both so much for uh, helping me out today. Um, uh, Tanisha, uh, who should reach out to you and how would they do it? Uh, sure. So great question. Um, any brands uh, who are in the B2B space. Uh, I work with, in terms of my agency uh, specifically, I work with B2B and e-commerce brands, specifically uh, small and medium business. It's like my sweet spot. Um, in terms of fractional CMO work, I work really well with startups. I'm definitely more of a hands-on key uh, CMO clearly is a probably <laughs> articulated throughout, um, but I, I'm open to having conversations and just, you know, having initial discovery calls because um, I may also too know other qualified CMO CMOs that could be a better fit. And I'm very transparent about uh, making sure that the projects that I work on align with my skills. And uh, if not, then I would definitely say like, hey, maybe I know another CMO uh, that, you know, would be better suited. And I'm a part of several different fractional communities. Um, so I'm definitely happy to also to refer if it's not a good fit, but I'm always a good starting place. And Tracy, how do people reach you and who should try? So, yes. Yeah, so uh, Moonshot hyphen strategy is my agency. And like Tanisha, I'm strictly B2B, not really in the e-commerce world, but B2B. And small mid-size is, is definitely my sweet spot. Um, I'm very strong in cybersecurity, fintech, uh, insurance, um, and higher ed education as well. Um, and like Tanisha, I'm totally transparent. If, if it's not the right fit, I too belong to other fractional CMO organizations where I could, um, you know, provide that, that information and, and that experience as well. I've done a lot in advisory, advising CEOs on uh, different stages in their growth strategy. Um, but yes, I, you know, I look forward to um, next steps. All right. Thank you mm -hmm. both for helping me out. And uh, now I know what GRR is. And I honestly <laughs> did not. So I love that. Oh. And uh, uh, I guess that's about it for us today. Um, this is episode 18. Um, hard to believe. I'm only like five weeks into this episode 18. So that's fantastic. Uh, congratulations. Uh, yeah. Thank congratulations. You. Uh, I'm going to have something special for 25, I think. But uh, if you're watching this and it's the first one you've ever seen, there are at least 17 others. <laughs> <laughs> so feel free to poke around. And in the meantime, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.